Hi everyone, I'm Danny and I'm a consultant here at The Profs in the Engineering and Science Admissions applications for top universities in the UK, such as Oxbridge and Imperial. So we'll be going through the Cambridge Engineering interview and how to ace it in this video. Firstly, what is a Cambridge Engineering interview? Well, for Cambridge, in applying for it, you send off your UCAS application like you do for other universities. Then you sit the admissions test, the ESAT, and then a month or so after this, you tend to get called up for interview if you're successful. This interview is a way for Cambridge to test your aptitude and suitability for their engineering course. So it's really a way for you to make a good impression of yourself and show the, show the tutors that you know your stuff. What does this interview involve and what are they looking for? Typically, in Cambridge, you'll be invited for two interviews. So this gives you two opportunities to show these tutors or supervisors that you're a good engineering candidate, that you'd be able to succeed on this engineering course, and also just be able to ask questions about what the course entails and whether it's the right fit for you. So it's a two-way two interview in that sense, mostly one way, but you do have the opportunity at the end to ask any questions about the course that, that you'd want to find out. In these two interviews, it can range from very personal statement-based questions to very technical questions, so a lot of maths, a lot of physics. You'll find that for most colleges, they tend to focus on technical questions above all. So it's not unheard of that some questions focus on more personal statement-based questions. So these would be questions related to enthusiasm, what type of things in engineering you enjoy learning about, what type of projects you might have worked on, things that you might have mentioned in your personal statement. So some colleges do have these featured in their interviews. Some will spend a whole interview just on these questions, but for the majority, they'll tend to have mostly technical questions and possibly a few or none uh, or few or no questions related to your personal statement or, or any interest in engineering. So you can say that a lot of these colleges like to get straight to business, seeing how good you are at maths, how good you are at physics, seeing whether you'll make a good engineer and a good student on their course. So based on that, we'll try and see how we can ace the Cambridge Engineering interview. The first thing that comes with any type of acing is how you prepare for this. So you need to know what you're getting into when it comes to a Cambridge engineering interview. Since these courses or these interviews, I should say, tend to focus on the technical content, it's imperative that you know your A-level maths and physics content inside out. And when I, mean, when I say inside out, I mean inside out. Even if you get A stars across the board, you need to make sure you understand that content really, really well in depth and such that if they ask you any question where they try to throw a curveball, not that they try to, but in case they do, then you know what they're getting at. So this involves looking over possibly course notes or any, any textbook that you have, looking possibly into the deeper explanations that I know you or I might tend to ignore when we're, when we're studying. So we know that we only need to know a certain bit of content to get a good mark in the test. So we don't need to read the deeper explanations that the textbook gives. But for Cambridge engineering interviews, you find that the more, the more in-depth you know a topic, for example, let's say electricity, you understand how circuits work. You understand how the electrons flow and how energy is transferred from one point to another. If you know how that works and all the mechanisms involved in these, in these processes, when they come to ask you a question in the interview, you're then able to think, okay, I know this is what's usually appropriate or this is usually the standard, but then they're saying something here which contradicts this idea or maybe just extends this idea to a higher, to a higher degree. So then you have to think, okay, what changes given my current knowledge and then given what they've just told me? So in preparation, just think, how can I know all the stuff that I've learned at A-level really well, really in depth, so thoroughly, that if they were to ask me anything on it, I'd be able to answer very well and show that I have a good and deep understanding of the content. With this also comes the opportunity to learn a bit of university uh, content. So what I found with a lot, of, a lot of Cambridge engineering interviews is the way they set the questions will be a lecturer or a supervisor will be thinking possibly throughout the year okay, I know this bit of my course, or I know this bit of an A-level course, how could I extend that question to make it more challenging? 
what could I do to, to put a different spin on this that would make it quite tricky for a lot of students or even possibly students at university uh, to, to answer. So you'll find that these questions are generally quite, quite tricky. So even if you were to be accepted onto this Cambridge course for engineering, and then you were to sit an interview the next year, even while being on the degree, you might still struggle to answer these problems because the creativity and level of problem solving needed is just such a, at such a high level compared to what you're used to at A level, and even probably higher than what you tend to find in your first year course as you join the university. So what they're looking for is really students that they think would excel on this course. And so sometimes the questions that they ask are pitched at the level of a first year engineering student. Because if they saw that you struggle to understand a certain concept, let's say rotational mechanics, then they think, oh, this student might struggle to understand this when they come to enroll at the university. And it doesn't give the best impression to the supervisors that you'd be able to learn new content very quickly. Because ultimately, being a very top university, Cambridge tends to teach at quite a high pace. So you need to be able to learn concepts very quickly and be able to take the information and things that you've learned throughout your school and A-level studies and see how you can then extend those concepts to higher and higher, um, higher and higher concepts that you learn throughout university. The good thing with an engineering course, as well as a lot of the other sciences, is they're quite linear. So topics that you learn earlier tend to build and build on um, topics that you learn later, sorry, tend to build on earlier topics. So making sure your understanding, as I mentioned before, is as thorough as possible in earlier topics means that you won't have such a, such a huge barrier to understanding the higher level topics that they'll, they'll, they might cover at interview. So in terms of preparation, you want to make sure you understand your A-level content as much as possible and also just learn some new content that might be featured in an engineering course at first year. So what this could include is looking at what Cambridge teach their students in their first year of engineering and then focusing on topics such as those in structural mechanics and the math mathematics for engineers. These topics will give you a good grounding as to what types of topics supervisors might be looking at when they, when they set up a question because they might be teaching something in their course and think, oh, I could make this into a challenging question to set for, an, for a student that's being interviewed for, for my college. And so they'll think about those questions throughout the year and then pitch it at that level, if not a little below to, to uh, A-level standard, but the, the challenging parts of the A-level syllabus. How do, you, how do you prepare for something such as this? Because obviously when you go on the course, there'll be lots, lots to learn and it takes a whole year to learn all that content. So if you're in year 12 or year 13 or lower six slash upper six, how would you know what to focus on? Well, typically what a Cambridge interview tends to focus on are mechanics, electricity, and then quite a bit of the mass content that you would have learned throughout school. So are you able to approximate well, so you can use a binomial expansion? Do you know how to deal with series and parallel circuits? Do you know what the power dissipating the resistor is? As well as in mechanics, can you use your SUVAT equations? Do you know when not to use SUVAT equations, so when the acceleration is not constant? Can you involve your integration and differentiation, the calculus topics that you've learned? Can you involve these in a physics slash engineering context? Because what you'll find is that a lot of people struggle with translating that knowledge that they've learned in A-level maths. So how to use differentiation, how to use integration. They struggle with actually applying that to physics and engineering concepts because they don't have to in their physics A-level or IB courses. So this can be a good point of focus. So your calculus, mechanics, electricity, as well as general maths approximation skills. These are the things that you should look out for when looking at possibly uh, course content to focus on. As well with these questions, there's very limited information that they tend to provide in, uh, in the interviews. So in A-levels, you're used to questions where they build up a, a problem. So at the start, they say, can you work out the momentum of this, this object just before a collision? And then could you work out the kinetic energy lost during the collision? And then could you work out the fraction of the kinetic energy lost? So you can see that the, these A-level questions, they build and guide you into answering the problem overall. Whereas something 
uh, Cambridge interview question would be for engineering is, let's say I have a spring that is hanging from a ceiling under its own weight. Could you find its extension? So if you notice there, barely any information, told you almost nothing about, about the spring. So what you have to try and do there is overlay it with information and maybe some, some variables that you think might be important in the problem. And you just have to build your answer from scratch. So there won't be as much hand-holding as there would be in an A-level question, but the, the problem solving and creativity that you need to answer this will, be, uh, will have been prepared from when you were doing uh, the A-level, looking over the A-level content, also looking into a uh, university first year content. So how do you build up a question from scratch? What topics might be relevant based on what the question is asking? And then what, uh, what possible paths do you have for, for answering that question? So the question just mentioned, I think it's hanging under its own weight. So I need to think of maybe young modulus. I need to think of how does extension depend on the young modulus, the area, the length of the, of the spring, and then what's actually pulling it down, which is gravity. So I try and feature all of those concepts in this question and try and get an answer in the end and then present, present my solution to them. While the questions are quite difficult in this Cambridge engineering interview, the interviews are there also to help you or give you prompts in, in the interview. And the main reason for this is that interviews are also simulating what a supervision is like at Cambridge. So at Cambridge, you get a supervision uh, roughly every week or every two weeks, depending on what year you are in your course. So at the start of your degree in, in Cambridge, you tend to get uh, supervision every week. And these would tend to go over problem sheets that had been set during, during your lectures or, or over the course of a, uh, of a week at the uni. So these supervisions give you a chance to ask any questions on the problems that you couldn't solve or ask for any clarification on even the problems that you might have been able to solve in, in these problem sheets. And so the engineering interview is similar to that. So they give you problems, which are similar maybe to the problem sheets that they'd, that they'd provide at uni. And they want to see also how teachable you are. So let's say, let's say you couldn't really get what the next step is when you're, when you're setting up your solution to the problem. You don't understand where to go from here. They might give you a prompt that's not that obvious. So they're not going to give you the answer straight away, but they might give you a prompt and then if they see that you are able to receive and process that information and think, ah, so that means I need to do this. So let's say, for example, they say, have you factored in gravity? Then you might need to think, okay, where does gravity come into this? How is it actually working on this? How does this change my approach? Or how does it help my approach? Then they can see that you're very fluid in how, you're, in how you think, that you're teachable and you can adapt given uh, some new information. So a lot of the questions are not, are not so easy that you could be able to get it from the get-go. So you might not be able to answer that question from when they, from when they give you the, the briefing. But as they give you some prompts throughout the problem, they might be able to see that this student is teachable, they're adaptable, they could do well on these supervisions in the Cambridge en uh, Engineering undergraduate degree. So it's not all about looking like you know the answer. It's, it's about, do you have the right way of thinking about the problem in the first place? Can you think like an engineer? Which is where learning that first year content or understanding your A-level content very well comes in. And then possibly reading, reading things on general engineering principles. This is where knowing how to approach a problem is, uh, is really key in answering, in answering these questions. So there's an emphasis on these interviews on uh, mathematical fluency as well. So a lot of university degrees in the UK don't focus on the math side as much. So maths is required, but not necessarily a big focus. Whereas for Cambridge engineering, how good you are at maths is really, really important. It's been said that a lot of Cambridge courses, whether it's economics, engineering, or the sciences, they're almost all like applied maths courses because there's such a high level of maths, mathematical content that they involve. So that's typically why it's encouraged to do further maths at A-level, because this helps with your problem solving and general maths ability that could, that could help in solving the problems that are set at a Cambridge engineering interview, as well as just trying lots of different styles of maths problems 
like the UKMT questions mentioned in the ESAT, uh, in the ESAT video. These types of questions improve your creativity, your maths fluency and problem solving ability. And they allow you to know that when, when you see a question, what do you want to focus on? What things are not that relevant? And then do you see a clear path? When you're able to think like an engineer and consider a problem as an engineer, then when you get a question, you'll be able to focus on the concepts that really matter and ignore the concepts that don't. So you might, be able, you might need to approximate uh, an answer. So you might not need the exact result, but just to approximate. So can you approximate very well? Do you know the right level of physics that's needed? So do I need to use this exact bit of physics or can I use another approximation of, of this bit of physics? And then also, can you work out what a question is really getting at from this? So try and find out what the mechanism is first. What is the question really about? We have a question that's typically asked about a ball that you're trying to roll over a step. And students tend to struggle on this because what makes this question hard is it's not obvious how, how it's working, what makes this ball roll over the step. And it turns out that this involves just using moments. But because the question doesn't explicitly say moments like it would at A-level, students tend to struggle and can't think of any ideas for how to move forward. The maths itself is actually very, very easy once you understand that it's moments. But getting it to be moments or understanding that it's a moments question is where that extra level of thinking and understanding of your courses comes in. So the key features of these, of these interviews are knowing your technical content really well, also reading ahead to understand your general engineering principles. And then last but not least, it's focusing on explaining yourself as you, uh, as you answer these questions. So a lot of students will tend to sit there in silence, but they really want to hear how you think, even if you think what you're saying is not, uh, not important or if, it, if you think it's wrong, it's worth saying that because then they might be able to prompt you a bit better. Because if you just sit in silence for five minutes, they have no idea what you're thinking about. Maybe you're about to solve the problem, or maybe you're just still really struggling. So you need to make it clear what you're thinking and when. So if I were trying a problem and they asked me to sketch a graph, then in that problem I could say, well, I see that there's a cosine here, so I think it might have some periodicity. It might be periodic and repeat. Uh, I also know that cosine is at maximum one and at a minimum minus one, so that might be useful. So even bits of information you might think aren't that relevant or might seem too obvious, they can be good for the interviewer to prompt you, especially if you're assuming or misinterpreting something that you actually shouldn't. Talking throughout your interview is a really good way to show that you'd be able to explain the things that you struggle on and also what you understand quite well. And then the uh, interviewers can bridge the gap. So that's what a supervisor would do when you come onto the, onto the course. They would bridge the gap between what you know, if you can explain that quite well, and then what you don't know, also if you can explain that quite well. And that's how you can ace a Cambridge engineering interview through talking, knowing what you're talking about, knowing what you're not talking about and understanding that, as well as just having a lot of mathematical fluency. If you found that video helpful and of good value, then feel free to give it a like and subscribe, as well as share it with any friends that you also think might find it useful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you think you could benefit from the support of someone like myself as a consultant, then feel free to get in contact with the profs on the information provided on screen right now. And as always, best of luck in your preparation and application for your desired course.